Hey, how's it going? I have been asked to do a uh, tutorial on how I made a 3D moving picture uh, from a 2D uh, with one of my videos. I did a disc golfing video that I've got some good reviews on and uh, somebody said I should uh, ask how I did it. So I thought I'd go ahead and put together a tutorial on, uh, on, on how that's done. There's a lot of great uh, videos out there where people take 2D pictures and turn them to 3D and some of them are outstanding, way better quality than what I've done. Uh, but what I'd like to do is, uh, what I did different with mine was add video in front of it and behind it so it goes from a video to a 3D back to the video. So I'm going to explain how I did that. Uh, first of all, you definitely have to have, uh, I work with Adobe, so as far as Adobe you have to have three different programs to work to do this. So you have to have Adobe Premiere, you have to have Adobe Photoshop and Adobe After Effects. So the first thing I'm going to go into is choosing the footage to use because some footage is better than others. So I'm going to go into that next. Okay, what I'm going to show you first is uh, what is probably not the best type of footage to use. Um, first of all, I should, it should go without saying that you should have some sort of basic knowledge of those three programs, Premiere Pro, Photoshop, and After Effects and how to do the different techniques that is uh, used to put this together. As far as footage that's not good to use, any type of footage that has more or less non-organic elements, when you go to do the cropping of them and separating the elements in Photoshop, and you, if you know anything about cloning, again, you should know something about cloning in Photoshop, to make, to clone non-organic elements, in other words, buildings, uh, things like this, uh, it can be very difficult to do very clean, but to clone this building behind the skateboarder uh, and get those lines and everything just right to when you add the 3D movement, so when you see what's behind the person, uh, to do that properly, that's going to be very, very difficult to do. It could be done, you know, in this line here, that would have to be replicated, uh, that would have to be cloned in behind the skateboarder, so. Uh, it could be done, but it would be very, very difficult to do, especially for the first-time user. So this is probably not the best footage to use. What better footage would be used would some, be something of more organic elements that you can easily clone. Now, this is the one that I chose to use because uh, I can crop out the car easily. Um, Albeit this fence line is a non-organic element, it's fairly clean, easy to replicate, and I wanted to use that to show you how to do straight lines like that, how to crop that out, but for the most part this is pretty easy to use because everything behind there is kind of organic, uh, the leaves and everything, the trees, that is going to be very easy to clone. Okay, after you've chosen your source footage that you're going to use to make this uh, 3D composite, uh, what I do first is I lay it on the timeline of Premiere Pro, and I scan it to find the point that I want to use for the 3D composite. So I just look for a spot in time that I think would be a great place to, to do it at. And the one that I've chosen, so I chose that spot right there. And once I've done that, I take a snapshot of it right here. So you create a picture of it. Name it put it into a place where you're going to know where it's at and just remember it there because you're going to have to go get it with Photoshop. So, And I also lay a marker on my timeline right here so I know where this spot is. So once I've taken that picture, I'm going to move this out of the way. Here's my timeline. This is the spot in time where I laid the marker. I took the picture and I've already split the clip. I've split the clip because this split is where you're going to add the After Effects 3D composite. So it goes from moving video to 3D back to the video. So split the clip, that's where you've taken the picture. Now we're going to take the picture and separate the layers. Okay, now I've got Photoshop open. I have went and grabbed the picture that I took where that split is in the timeline. And the first thing I'm going to do is to select the car and crop that out and make a layer out of it. And now again, you should know something about 
the tools, the basic tools in Photoshop. Uh, I'm not really going to go into that, but basically I take my quick selection tool right up here. See the icon up in your upper left? Quick selection tool. And I start to just select the car and I'll clean it up with the refine edge. Once I do that, I separate the layer. I've already done this one. There's the car. I've already separated it, made a layer out of it. Uh, I just make new layer out of it. And then once I make a new layer out of it, and it puts it on there, I get rid of it, and it's going to leave a space here where you then have to clone material in what happens here. So I'm going to take the clone tool here. I would not leave that car over there. I'm just taking it away just so you can, you can, you can see that there's a spot left over here. And I'm just going to start to paint in where these trees are. When you get to this fence line, you have to create a straight edge here. So, what you do, clone, put your icon right over a straight edge where the fence line meets the trees behind it, take a clone of that spot, and just move it over. And as you can see, you start to create that edge. I also did the tree, and so now I've got three separate layers. And as you can see, you can turn them on and off. So that is the next step after you take the picture from the timeline, put it into Photoshop, get select the layers that you're going to make the 3D movement out of. I'm just choosing three, the main background, the tree, and the car. So those are the three I've chosen. Now we're going to send this into After Effects to separate the layers and put a 3D camera movement in it. Okay, I've got After Effects open. I'm going to go through the basic first steps to get you started on once you open up After Effects. New composition. Uh, I know my footage was at a 29.97 frames per second, and I know it was 1920 by 1080. I'm going to just make this 3D composite at the, at the most 10 seconds. You can change it later if you want, uh, but I'm just going to make it 10 seconds for now. But you should know what kind of footage you have, uh, and then make sure that your composite matches it. So that's fine. There we've got our brand new uh, composite open. We're going to go grab the Photoshop file. So import file. I know where that's located. There it is. Open it. Now it's going to bring up this window here. That's uh, import kind composition. Leave it fine. The default way it's going to come up is what you're going to want anyhow. Editable layer styles. Editable layer styles. Make sure that that's clicked. Something like that. But just leave it pretty much as is. Okay. So now that we've got the layers, I'm going to double click on this RC jump here. That's what it was called. That's the composite I brought in. Now once I've double clicked on that, it's brought it all to the timeline. I want to make certain, looking over here, try to zoom in a little bit over there, sorry, but make certain that your layers are in the order that you want them in space. The car should be on top, because that's going to be the closest to the viewer. The tree is going to be next in line here. Then the main background is going to be at the bottom. So that's, they're in that correct order, but just make certain of that when you look at that, that they are in the correct order. Okay. So now once we've done that, click on the 3D box for all three layers. Add your camera. Oops. There's our camera. I'm just going to use a stock 35. All right, there's our camera. Now, so since we only have one 2D image, we need to separate the layers. We're going to take this car first. I'm going to go over this left view here. There's our car layer. There's its 3D icon there. It shows its 3D. It's a it, it's in 3D space. 
I'm going to grab the z-axis and bring it closer to the camera because that's going to be the closest to the camera. And I'm going to take the tree. There's the tree. It's still in the main line here, the main 2D image. I'm going to take that, bring that just a little bit closer, and the main background I'm going to almost leave right where it's at. I'm going to leave that pretty close to that tree. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to one big view, make certain we have our active camera selected, and look at the main background first. Here's our main background, and as you can see, it's gotten a little bit smaller here. So I'm going to hit the S, bring the scale up just a little bit to make certain it matches our composite frame. Um, about 102. There we go. Uh, it's maybe about 101. There we go, that's good. Okay, close that, bring up the tree, hit the scale. As you can see, our tree, since we brought it closer to the camera, the image is now larger than the composite, so we have to scale it down a little bit. Now the car, that's probably going to be much larger now, as you can see it is. The car, because we brought really close to the camera, it's actually zoomed in on it, so it's much larger than our composite frame. We have to scale it down. As you can see here, we're scaling it down. Take it pretty close. There you go. So now, everything looks correct in size as it did in the beginning, because we've separated the three layers, and we've made them all the same size as the composite frame that we're working with. So now once you've done that, look at my camera tool again, and I'm going to hold it on it and spin it around. Now as you can see, it's got a 3D space to it. From there, then you just got to know something about keyframing and moving your camera around in 3D space, and I've already made one and I've added different keyframes down in here to represent the camera movement in 3D space. You just start at the beginning with the way the footage looked in the beginning. Then you add your keyframe movements with the camera only. The camera is the only thing that you're moving around. You're not moving layers around. You're just moving the internal camera around. And you want to make certain that at the end it ends back up looking exactly like the same scale that it did in the beginning because what you're going to do is you're going to insert this in that split where the Premiere Pro was, that split in time. So add your keyframe movements, whatever you want, and that's going to be my 3D little movement that I'm adding in there. So now we're going to take this saved After Effects project file and add that into Premiere Pro. Okay, now we're back to Premiere Pro. I'm going to import an After Effects file that we saved. So, go into File, Import. I know where my After Effects project file is. RC3D, here it is. Import it. So it's going to bring up this window here. That's what was in the project folder over here in After Effects. RC Jump was the comp that I used. So, I'm going to just double click on it. When I double clicked on it, here it is over here on the left. I'm just going to take it and drag it to that split down here in my timeline. Move this out of the way. There's the split in the clip that I made where the picture was. And instead of that picture, it's now an After Effects file. I'm going to hold down Control and drag it. And it's going to insert it and push the video the end video after it right over here. So now we've got the end product without the music. Let's see what it looks like here. That's it. So uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, this is my first DIY on a, on a video project, so uh, let me know if you have any questions on this, and I'll be uh, glad to get back to you and answer it.
All right, good luck.